So, uh, I'm a research scholar, currently in second year of my PhD, and the theme on which I work is a novel theme. I work on an alternative economic model for ocean conservation, and at the same time, which harnesses maritime sustainability. So why am I showing this picture? This picture says it all. Why do we need to conserve our oceans? Because we depend on our oceans for our survival. Oceans are our life support systems, but humanity has so far treated oceans as limitless resources for resource extraction. And this is the picture. It's, it's a very small example what we have done to our oceans. That's why we need an alternate solution to revive our oceans so that they can act as a planet's life support system. Why oceans are important? Because they cover almost 72% of our Earth's surface. And as per the report by United Nations, almost 80% of global world trade is done via sea. There is substantial amount of global world population which depends on sea for their survival and livelihood. And 95% of biosphere reserves are stored in our oceans. That makes a substantial amount and that's why we need to revive our oceans. The term blue economy, I don't think many of you are familiar with. Uh, it was propounded by Professor Gunter Pauli in year 1994, but the term uh, gained momentum in early 2012 at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development. The conference was focusing on two major key themes. Those were improved framework for sustainable development goals. There are 17 such goals adopted by United Nations. And the second one was greening of uh, economies, the green economy concept. How many of you believe that uh, climate change is a future phenomena? I think no one. Because climate change is problem of today and now. It's not a future phenomena. And we, if we don't act now, we talk about sustainable economies, we talk about greening of our economies, but the truth is, if we, there's no possibility of green without blue. If we don't act now, our future is gloomy. This is a picture which uh, talks in brief about what a blue economy does, what a blue economy model does. How World Bank defines blue economy is, Sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, for improving livelihoods of the people and creating jobs, and sustaining our ocean ecosystem health at the same time. There are many other activities associated with blue economy, but my major research areas are tourism and climate change. Because maritime tourism constitutes almost, uh, it's the second, second major contributor to blue economy after oil and natural gas, that makes it uh, 26% is a considered uh, amount. That's why, and uh, because tourism is one such industry which contributes to climate change, but at the same time, it also gets impacted by the climate change. So that makes this uh, system even more complex. A research states that by 2050, plastics in the sea will overweigh all the fish in the sea. That's a huge number, and that's why we need to act on this. Uh, this particular picture shows how COVID-19 has affected our oceans. And there are several other agencies which are working to protect the oceans, but uh, we are far, far away. What's the way ahead? I propose a regional integration framework for, for blue economy, there is need, when it comes to, uh, when we talk about oceans, defining borders is a major challenge. And that makes the task even more difficult because there are, they are uh, continuous uh, conflicts going on between the countries to harness the maritime resources. And that, that makes uh, oceans as battlegrounds for so many reasons. Education and training in blue, in blue economy, uh, a neighboring country, a developing one, Bangladesh, is really doing great in its blue economy effort. We need an inclusive framework for international partnerships in blue economy, and we need to use oceans at shared development spaces. What can we do? Because any amount of uh, uh, governance 
you know, uh, the solutions will not work if we individually don't take responsibility to it. We, the simple of the things we can do from our end is reducing plastic use, participating in or organizing cleanup drives, supporting the right legislation, which is working for waste management, supporting research and organizations. Yeah, research is an important part. And individual efforts as simple as being a responsible traveler. This particular picture is how I started my research. This island nation in Pacific Ocean, it's a group of 33 small islands. And uh, as per the report by National Tidal Center of Australia, uh, this island nation is going to disappear in near future. Because of the rising ocean, rising sea level, so they are people who are actually going to get submerged under the sea. And that this particular incident shook me from within. That was the cause I started doing research on this particular matter. And with very little I have done with my articles, with my work, uh, last week I have received a Young Researcher Award for my contribution to Asian tourism research. When I was developing my research proposal, uh, I was uh, actually a very nerdy student from the beginning. So with my very good academic track records and my unique research idea, I applied to every possible institution I could, thinking I will be surely getting it. But what happened was I failed miserably because, yeah, nobody took me. Everyone was liking my idea. I was being appreciated, but uh, yeah, I was not getting into that thing. But uh, that strong purpose which I had, I wanted to, I, I, I was not only looking for a PhD admission, I wanted to make impact with my work because I believed that my study is going to impact the people when, when it comes to implementation. So I, yes, I, I didn't give up and uh, uh, no achievement is individual. Uh, I, I want to thank Tony sir for the recognition. And uh, there have been so many other people who have believed in me. We all have a guiding star in our life. For me, it was my mother. And with due respect to all the fathers, can we have a huge round of applause for all the mothers? Thank you. Thank you very much. There is a uh, quote which I want to say here. Uh, Alfred Thayer Mahan, he was a maritime strategist, American maritime strategist. Um, back then in 1897, his thought on um, how the ocean space will be governed still holds relevance in this era. He said, whoever controls the Indian Ocean will dominate Asia. And this ocean will be the key to seven seas in the 21st century. The destiny of the world will be decided on its waters. And that is pretty much relevant to the scenario what we see today. This makes India, this keeps India actually in a transitional position too, because as earlier it was called uh, Asia Pacific, the region is now called Indo Pacific. Uh, the term is relatively new in geopolitical nomenclature, but it has gained increased traction and it actually places us in the position that India has to define its own dominance in the term Indo-Pacific. And that's make, that, that makes my study even more relevant because Asia is one such continent which constitutes almost uh, one third of the global population and uh, the blue economy efforts uh, whatever have been done in West, we cannot apply the same thing in Asian context. So currently, I am working on a blue economy development framework for India. Uh, while I was growing up, I started reading Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam very early in my life. So many of my thoughts, my work is shaped by his ideas. 
uh, there was a point in my life when I wanted to become an astronaut and represent India. I wanted to be a cricketer and play cricket for the country. And I wanted to become an Air Force pilot. There was no possibility I could do everything. I landed up being a researcher. But yes, today I can say with my work, I am representing India. And I wish to contribute to, because government of India is actually preparing blue economy draft policy. They are inviting inputs for the policy making. So with my work, I wish to contribute to that thing. And uh, in, in my 27 years of journey, I would like to share what I have learned is uh, you have to attach your life to something bigger than yourself, some, a strong purpose which will keep you guided, which will all the time when you fall back, you will pick up your pieces and you will stand up and fight again. I identify myself as a hustler, as a fighter, because you cannot let your obstacles or limitations define you. And this city, in my this very short journey, uh, I was 18 when I left my home to study. Nobody believed in me that time, but they do today. Uh, with little idea that people will not speak Hindi here. So I was struggling to speak in English that time. This city, Chennai, has made me the person I am today. It has been a very crucial, it has played a crucial part in my journey. A person who was quiet, who was hesitant, who was meek, who could not speak up, to making me a person who can proudly say, Tamil Kunjum Kunjum Terium, this city has made me this. So I am still learning, evolving. And uh, there is a question I live by and I want you to live with. Uh, Dr. Kalam used to ask this question very often to his students. Question was, what would you like to be remembered for? Answer to this question for me is still evolving. I'm still adding value to my answer, to my narrative. And uh, at the end, I want to say, be strong, be brave, and be infinite in all your pursuits. And please answer this question for yourself, because that will make you, that will define you, actually, in life. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.